Hello and welcome to RegoFix Tech Chat. My name is David McHenry. I am the Engineering and Technical Manager here at RegoFix USA. Today, I want to talk about TIR. Well, what is it? Where does it come from? And what do those letters mean? A lot of times in this industry, we take for granted that everybody knows the abbreviations we use. And one of the most common is TIR, which stands for Total Indicated Runout. Well, what is it? How does it apply to assembled products? And what happens when you stack them all together? So let's spend a little bit of time and let's talk about the different components that go into an ER assembly, what their call out is from the manufacturer, and what happens when you stack them all together. Let's start with the ER collet. We've talked about the ER collet many times throughout the Tech Chat video series that we are doing. And we've talked about how and where you measure the TIR for an ER collet. That it's roughly about three and a half to four times from the face of the collet, but you need to look at the catalog to get the, the exact number. But what is it? What it's actually measuring is how centered or how true the cutting tool or test bar is rotating inside of that collet. So the collet itself has a callout or a TIR callout of 4 tenths, 10 microns, or 5 tenths, 5 microns, whether it's a UP or a standard collet. So that's what you're starting with in just the collet itself. But the collet doesn't make up the entire assembly. You also have a tool holder. Most tool holders have a callout from taper, to ID of the collet cavity of three microns or roughly one tenth. Now that's the runout or the indicated runout of just the tool holder by itself. That doesn't include the collet. So let's take a look at some other parts that go into this. The cutting tool. Most cutting tool manufacturers have a concentricity or a TIR callout of the cutting tool that's right around that two tenths range. So you can see I'm getting a pretty good stack up or potential stack up when I look at two tenths for a cutting tool. I'm looking at one tenth for a tool holder and I'm looking at upwards of four tenths for a U for a regular collet or two tenths for a UP. That makes for the possibility of a very large or a very high TIR, but that usually happens only in a worst case scenario. So what we are going to do is we are going to assemble the tool holder assembly that we have here, but instead of using the cutting tool, I'm actually going to use a special gauge pin that is, has a concentricity of better than 50 millions. This will allow us to kind of negate or rule out the runout from the cutting tool so we can see just what the runout assembly is for the tool holder, for the collet, and I didn't even mention what the nut might be able to do to it. We've moved over to the workbench, and I have the different products I had in my hand at the table a few minutes ago, but I've also assembled two different assemblies. Now, Yes, one's a Rego fix and one is somebody else's, but that's not really what we're showing here. The idea here is that depending on how you stack products up will depend on the overall TIR you get out of the overall assembly. Now we still have our 50 micron pin. Both collets used are a standard collet. They're called out at four tenths or better. And both tool holders used have a specification TIR of three microns or one tenth taper to taper. So our assemblies should be pretty close. What we don't know though is how those tolerances line up with each other. Do they line up that they're all adding or do they line up that they are all subtracting from each other or working in unison so you end up with a really good value. So let's move over to our TIR measuring device and take a look at these and discuss the values that we see. Both the holders that we have assembled have about the exact same gauge length. So I've set the indicator to measure three times diameters up. 
and we're using a half inch pin, so roughly an inch and a half from the face of the collet. And I'm gonna start off with the RegoFix product. And it's all assembled, it's all torqued to 100 foot pounds, the same with the other tool holder we have here. So if I put this into the, to the measuring device, and let's get the tool to seat, and give it a quick rotation, and you can see it's right around four, four and a half microns total TIR. Now, if you're keeping score out there, four micron TIR is actually better than what we call out for our UP collet, which is five microns. So this assembly, all of our tolerances are, are subtracting from each other, and it's lined up to give us a very good run out quality for this. So this tool would operate very well in your shop. Well, let's see what the other one does and talk about the results we see with that. So now we have our second assembly in the TIR measuring device. It has that same 50 micron pin, the same 10 micron collet, and the tool holder has a call out equal to the previous assembly of three microns or one tenth taper to taper. So what run out does this one provide? So giving it a quick spin and looking at our indicator, we are looking right around about 10 microns total. So not too bad really if you consider a regular ER collet has a 10 micron run out on it, but this is twice the value of the previous assembly. Now, does that mean that parts of this assembly are bad or there's an issue? Not really, it just means that my tolerances for this assembly lined up so that they're all adding to each other to give me a different value than I had on the previous one. This is where your tolerances from the tool holder to the collet, to the nut, to the cutting tool or gauge pin all come to play. How tight is your manufacturer controlling those? Are they making all the different pieces that go into it? Is there any way to bring that consistency from 10 microns down to the four or five microns? Well, there is, and it's by using high quality product, but that's a decision you have to make. The example here today was what happens when your tolerances stack up to your benefit or they stack up in a negative way? So my tool life difference from a four micron to a 10 micron is about a 30% difference in tool life. That's a significant difference just based on the way your assembly stacks up. Now that we've spent a few minutes talking about total indicated runout or TIR and the different parts that go into an assembly and how they may add to TIR or subtract it to give you a good assembly or a bad assembly, if you have any questions on this, please feel free to contact the RegoFix Technical Group. We are here to answer your questions. Again, my name is David McHenry. Thank you for joining us.